Hey there, everybody. Let's look at an example of a circuit where we're not given any of the voltages or currents for the resistors within the circuit. So we can't just approach this using Kirchhoff's rules because we don't have enough information to start with. But because we have all the resistances, we can start out by analyzing the circuit and drawing a couple of equivalent circuits where we have to find the equivalent resistance and then use Ohm's law to figure out the current. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this circuit by redrawing it considering what the equivalent resistance of those two resistors are. So that will look like that where this voltage is still 100 volts and R1 is still 8 ohms. So the thing that I have to do is I have to figure out what is the equivalent resistance between a 30 ohm and 20 ohm resistor in parallel with each other. So remember that the equivalent resistance, if they're in parallel, we do the reciprocal rule thing. It's like 1 over REQ equals 1 over 30 plus 1 over 20. And so if you do that, we should get a common denominator, like perhaps 60. And so 1 over 30 would be the same as 2 over 60, and 1 over 20 would be the same as 3 over 60. And so 1 over REQ would be equal to 5 over 60. And so the equivalent resistance would be 60 over 5 and when you divide 60 by 5 you should get something like 12 so that means that I can replace this pair of parallel resistors with a single 12 ohm resistor and I haven't changed the circuit at all so the next thing to do would be to break it down even further. I'm going to move that over there um, to a single resistor circuit, which will look something like that. And so now I need to find the equivalent resistance between this pair of resistors. And so when they're in series, like they are there, I can find the equivalent resistance just by adding them up. So the equivalent resistance will be 8 ohms plus 12 ohms. And so 8 and 12 would give you 20 ohms. So that means that I can make the same circuit by having a single 20 ohm resistor. And the voltage of the battery is still 100 volts like that. So now that I've got it broken down to a simple one resistor circuit, now I can start to use Ohm's law to analyze what's going on. So to find the current through this single 20 ohm resistor, I would simply divide the voltage of the battery, so 100 volts over 20 ohms, which gives me a current of 5 amperes. So I'm label that as 5 amps. Now I can go up to the circuit above and I can label this current as being 5 amps and this current as being 5 amps. And the reason I can do that is I know that the junction rule says that the same current must be flowing through each of those and so the current flowing through the 20 ohm resistor has to be the same as the current flowing through the 8 ohm resistor. That would apply over here in this version of the circuit as well. Which would be the sum of the current flowing through the 20 ohm and the 30 ohm resistor. So I don't know what the current through my other two resistors are yet. But I do know together it has to add up to 5 amps. 
So the next thing I could do is I can use um, Ohm's law to figure out the voltage across all my resistors. So for example, if I do V equals IR for R1, it's like 5 amps times 8 ohms. That would give me a voltage of 40 volts. So 40 volts right there. So if I come back over to my picture on the right and I look at this 12 ohm resistor with 5 amps of current across it, I can say that the voltage on that would be 5 amps times 12 ohms which is 60 volts. Now because they're in parallel I know that both the 30 ohm and the 20 ohm resistor have to have a voltage of 60 volts across them. In other words, delta V is the same for both resistors and equal to the voltage across my imaginary 12 ohm resistor. And so now that I know what that voltage is, I can just apply Ohm's law again to find the current. So for I2, I could do 60 volts over 30 ohms, and that would give me 2 amperes. So I know this current is 2 amps. And then I could do the same thing for I3. So 60 volts over 20 ohms means that I3 would be equal to 3 amps. So 3 amps would go right there. And so I've solved for all the things that we need to solve for. I've got all my currents, and I've got all my voltages. The next thing we might do is check our work using um, Kirchhoff's rules. So for example, I know that this current right here has to equal the sum of those two currents, since there's a junction in between. And so 2 amps plus 3 amps equals 5 amps. So we did that part correctly. Junction rules obeyed. The next thing we might do is check to see if the loop rule is obeyed. So if I draw a closed loop, like right here, the voltage of my battery, which is 100, minus 40, minus the voltage on R2, which is 60, has to add up to 0. And so 100 minus 40 minus 60 does in fact equal 0. If we were to do it for a different loop, like for instance this loop, we'd see that we get the same thing. 100 minus 40 minus 60 still equals 0. So we could use Kirchhoff's rules to find missing things. Like for instance, I could have used it to find the 3 amps after I knew the 2 amps. But we can also use Kirchhoff's rules as a way to check ourselves. Um, everything we can, that we need to do, we can do using Ohm's Law. So Kirchhoff's rules can often be a useful check. So if you haven't already, uh, be sure to tackle your homework on um, circuits and um, with multiple resistors in them. And I'll see you next time in class. Ta-ta.